Welcome back, everybody, to a new video. Today I want to talk about doing whatever it takes. And I've always used whatever it takes as my personal mantra to get through life. I feel like a lot of people in today's society are too focused on how they solve a problem and how they get through something instead of directing all of their attention and resources and energy to actually getting through something. And what I mean by that is sometimes to get through whatever you're going through it's not gonna look pretty and the methods that you use and the tools that you use and the approach and the strategy that you use might not always be the most ethical or healthy or you know even dare I say legal <laughs> way of getting getting through something so let me I feel like I'm being a little, little bit vague here so allow me to elaborate when I was going through my cancer, and my, my second cancer I'm, I'm thinking about now specifically, I was relegated to spending my days in a hospital bed. Just literally not being allowed to go outside, being in the bed, and, and waiting for time to pass until the surgeons would tell me my blood values would be big enough or be high enough or, or, or good enough again for me to go out in between my chemo therapies. And so, needless to say, it was a pretty challenging time being in that bed. But something that I resorted to to pass the time, for example, was stores betting, gambling on stores. Now this is not something that I would normally do. I think, you know, not to get distracted and not to go off on a tangent, but I think the worst thing that has happened to the professional sports is the legality and the general acceptance of sports betting. Um, I'm a huge NBA fan myself. At this point, I'm absolutely convinced that a lot of games are rigged, that a lot of people are, you know, rigging the game because of that. And, I mean, again, don't want to get into it, but if you do a little bit of research, like the amount of people, the amount of players, the amount of referees that have actually been arrested and suspended for never playing the game should tell you all you need to know. Like, that is a real thing. Um, but so my point is, I think stores betting is quite insidious, quite evil. But I used that, there was a time that I used that to pass my time and to get through my day. And it was awesome, it was great. I would bet on games in my hospital bed and I would win money and I would be excited and I would just go, th go through a wide array of emotions. And it was fun. I used that to make my day bearable. Weed, another one. So many times, even, even, not even, you know, I can, I can, I can give you like ten more cancer stories, but just to make a point that it's not always about the context of life or life or death. Me arriving in Mexico City and not having friends, not having people to hang out with, not having a social circle. I basically told myself, it's all about sample size, it's all about putting myself in a position to win, and over time, if I keep reaching out, if I keep meeting people, that'll come. Once again, the common denominator is to have a plan. You need a plan, guys. All right, without a plan, you're just improvising. 
going with the flow. Suckers go with the flow. Anybody, anybody telling you to go with the flow is a goddamn idiot or a hippie. In all seriousness, you need a plan. And so, I basically looked at it like, okay, I don't have the social battery, nor the financial resources, nor the energy to go out every night and try to meet people. So, you know, you look at the data, when do people, people typically go out? Friday, Saturday. So I made a pact, I made a plan in which I did not allow myself to stay in and be a boring 36-year-old on Fridays and Saturdays. Putting yourself in a position to succeed. Okay? But so then, I still had Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Like, oh man, those, those Monday and Tuesday nights, they hit hard, right? Lonely as hell. Nowhere to go and not having the energy to go out. So what did I do? To pass the time, I smoked weed! Smoked a lot of weed! Every night! Made it bearable, made it fun, made it nice. I remember that one from my... The dark, dark cancer days. A proven method. So, if you take a step back and listen to what I'm saying, like, it's easy to conclude, oh, so, really? That's the hell of a coach you are. Hell of, hell of a philosopher. Telling people to just get high, smoke weed. That's my point, guys. Whatever it takes. And as part of a bigger plan, as part of, you know, a greater idea, which is that certain days you're not allowed to smoke weed, you're not allowed to smoke on Friday and Saturday, you're not allowed to run into that. And the idea and the plan is not that you turn into a junkie over time and you will forever need weed to feel good or to feel happy, you know? It's part of a bigger plan. It's part of a bigger day. A day in which you've already practiced yoga. A day in which you've already practiced cardio. A day in which you've already hit the gym, lifted the weights. Okay? So, for example, another stipulation of the plan as it pertains to weed is you're not allowed to smoke until 8 p.m. No daytime smoking. No stoner nonsense. That's sad. That's ridiculous. Anyone that's like lighting up at noon. I'm not talking about people with chronic depression and stuff like that. I'm just talking about regular folks like me who don't really need weed at all to get through the day. But do it because it's a hell of a lot easier. So that's what I did. And that's how I was able to once again stay down until we come up. That's how I was able to stick it out, get through those first daunting six months in a new country, a new continent, a new city, a new language. I got through it. Guess what? One day, woke up, all of a sudden, got invites, got a group of friends, got dates, got motion, got things going on. Because I breached the gap, the hardest part. The alternative would have been to stick it out, not use weed, and then what? Read a book? Watch movies? I don't like, I don't like watching movies. I know, I know I'm, I'm a weird, but I'm not a big, like, it's hard for me to, to watch stuff in the evening. I know most people do that. Um, but my point is, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that that's how I bridged that gap. And then I woke up and boom, I had a life. Because as part of the bigger plan, I continued to put myself in position to meet people. And now, lo and behold, all of a sudden, 
you have an invite for a dinner on Monday for a you know a, a gathering on Tuesday all of a sudden you no longer need weed to get through it but to get there in the first place it damn sure came in handy so I say all that to say don't focus too much on doing everything in the most ethical or, or healthy or like just get the job done just get to where you'll want to go focus on that focus on the destination and sometimes hey man whatever it takes whatever it takes all right guys that's the video hope you guys liked it give me your thoughts give me your comments don't forget to hit the thumbs up and i'll be back real soon we're all gonna make it with a plan with a vision and by actually thinking this thing through together stay down till you come up peace out